Peace will fill the world when we finally understand that only from within can it be spread throughout the land. Every single person living peace in what we do, only then will our dream come true. Only then will our dream come true. Only then will our dream come true. Good morning, friends. I'm Leona Evans, minister at Unity of San Luis Obispo, an inclusive, progressive, spiritual community affirming the good in all life. Welcome to our Sunday morning live stream. I'm delighted that you're here. I'm thrilled to be here. We have a wonderful service for you today. And I give thanks that we are here in this place knowing that we are expressions of spirit, expressions of God, worthy and wonderful, filled with divine potential and divine individuality that we are capable of sharing with others and with the world. We are loved and lovable. And so let us affirm that today as we spend our time together, as I remind you of the truth of your being and you integrate that message and find it at the forefront of your being when taking action. So let's prepare ourselves for our time together by relaxing. So let's take a deep breath and find ourselves comfortable where we are, feel our muscles relaxing and feel ourselves moving into a time where we acknowledge our muscles, our body is relaxing, and we are alert, alive, awake, and enthusiastic in mind and heart. Let's take another deep breath and affirm our invocation statement together. I am now in the presence of pure being, immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. Once again, I am now in the presence of pure being, immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. And so it is. Amen. Let's begin our service, as always, with a joy song performed by Matthew J. Evans. Good morning. Today we're going to sing There's Never Been a Better Time by Mark Welch. Please sing along with the lyrics on the bottom of the screen. There's never been a better time to be on this earth. Never been a better time to rise. Never been a better time to see our full work. Let our scattered vision realign. There's never been a better time to start a new life. Never been a better time for truth. Never been a better time to turn it all around. Catch up to the dreams we have pursued. Enter this time of hope. To celebrate life A billion years we have been in preparation Well now the time is here for us To free up every part of us Step into the whole of what we are There's never been a better time to radiate the light Never been a darker time to see Never been a darker time so filled with possibility Breathing in the darkness to be free There's never been a better time to crawl out of the past Never been a better time for humans Never been a better time for this whole universe Let fall away the cloak of ignorance Enter this time of holy 
to celebrate life. A billion years we have been in preparation Well now the time is here for us To free up every part of us Step into the whole of what we are There's never been a better time to be on this earth Never been a better time to rise Never been a better time to be on this earth Never been a better time to rise. Have a great morning, everybody. Thank you so much, Matthew. That was just lovely. Well, today we're going to talk about the importance of self-knowledge, which is one of the most important aspects of our spiritual journey. I saw a Dr. Phil show this past week. Perhaps you saw it as well. The topic was how the lack of a healthy self-concept, particularly on the subject of aging, can create a negative and distorted self-image, which can cause depression and even physical pain. The first guest was a 57-year-old former model, Paulina Porskova, who had just written a book called No Filter, which she describes as a story of getting lost and finding herself. She said that in her mid-40s, she started noticing the cloak of invisibility. It was as though, because she was aging, she had lost her value, both as a woman, as a career woman, and as a person. She started reaching out on social media and found that there were many other women out there who were feeling the same way. She also found those on social media who severely criticized her for expecting to be accepted as a valuable human being at her age. For example, when she posted a recent photo of herself in a bikini, which I thought was terrific, there were those who commented that she had no right to wear a bikini at the age of 57. They said things like, cover up grandma, as though her aging body was an object of shame. She came on the Dr. Phil show to encourage women, and all people, not to buy in to these negative ideas, to realize that at any age, Women and all people have the right to be valued and respected and to never have the belief that they're invisible or that they should be invisible. The other guests on the program were younger women who had also bought into this popular but harmful perception that once they reached a certain age, whether it was 40 or 50, for one woman it was 35, once they reached a certain age, that they were no longer attractive or of value. It was a really powerful episode that reminded me of how deeply influential social media and public opinion can be. It also reminded me of the importance of programs like this on television or in films or in books which reinforce the idea that each of us has the responsibility to develop an inner strength which can only come with genuine self-knowledge. We need to realize that there is wisdom inside each of us which can transcend popular trends in society and enable us to find value in ourselves no matter what our age or physical attributes. I am truly grateful that these ideas are being presented to worldwide audiences. And I'm also grateful that our unity and new thought teachings provide us with tools and methods to access self-knowledge based on the understanding that the presence of spirit, the presence of God is within us all and that we are valuable just the way we are. So, Let's discuss some important ways we can access this inner power. 
For hundreds of years, philosophers and wisdom teachers have emphasized the importance of self-knowledge in relation to our soul unfoldment. Self-knowledge is the process of waking up. As we become free of conditioned emotional responses and mechanical thinking, we discover the creativity that has lain dormant within us and learn more about the importance of genuine and accurate self-evaluation. Authentic self-knowledge creates the awareness that what we are is much greater than our experiences or our accomplishments. We become liberated from our narrow concept of reality so that we're free to embrace a whole new way of interpreting life. As Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, has said, it's as though we had been living in the basement of a large house, not realizing that there was an entire upper floor available to us. Self-knowledge opens the basement door and frees us to approach life in a more expanded and creative way. The process of awakening to our true self involves more than just reading or studying. It's a discipline that requires a great deal of practice. The fact is, we can read endlessly about our spiritual potential, but unless we're able to apply these ideas to our daily living, they'll remain nothing more than theory. In other words, Thinking about creative living is not the same as living creatively. Now, interestingly enough, the key to authentic self-knowledge is the realization that at the present moment, we don't really know ourselves, no matter how highly evolved we believe ourselves to be or that others tell us, no matter how long we have lived, no matter how many experiences we have had, there is so much more to learn about ourselves than we ever dreamed possible. So when I say we don't really know ourselves, I mean that for the most part, our responses to life are based on what we're conditioned to believe. The ancient Greek temple at Delphi had written over its portals the inscription, Know Thyself. Within the temple was an ancient mystery school that taught the theory and practice of soul development. One of the most important teaching methods was the use of Greek drama the dramas they used were the legends and tragic myths of the Greek religion. Now, from an esoteric standpoint, these tragedies symbolize the struggle that takes place within humankind when we don't know who we are. The story of Oedipus is a classic illustration of the misfortune that can befall us when we lack basic self-knowledge. And one of the greatest ways that we can observe ourselves lacking self-knowledge is when we say, I know all about that. You don't have to tell me a thing. Now, after Oedipus realizes that he has unknowingly slain his father and married his mother, even though an oracle had predicted it, he viciously rips his eyes from his head. Now, this violent act is more than a demonstration of self-loathing. As a metaphor, it becomes a symbol of liberation. Oedipus now sees that any further knowledge of real and enduring value will have to come from a deeper level than the senses can provide. We, too, must look beyond our sensory knowledge to reach the deeper levels of our soul, to understand the beliefs and attitudes that shape and determine our experiences, to awaken to the creative and dynamic self that yearns to be expressed. There's an inner light, an inner peace that we can find. 
There's an awakening of our mind that will make ordinary consciousness seem like a state of sleep. It will make us more effective in our everyday world. We're going to take a break right now and listen to some wonderful music from Brett Mitchell and Matthew J. Evans, and we'll come back and talk more about self-knowledge aiding us tremendously in our current perception of aging and looks and what they have meant to us. Here is a wonderful movie theme from Michelle Legrand from 1969 called, uh, the movie was Picasso Summer, uh, but the song is Summer Me, Winter Me. One, two, one. Summer Me, Winter Me, Michelle Legrand. If you get a chance, the lyrics, uh, there are nice lyrics too, uh, from the Bergmans, Marilyn and Alan Bergman. Just a beautiful tune. All Michelle Legrand stuff is just wonderful. It really is. So sweet. What a beautiful me melody. Just love that. Thank you so much, Brett Mitchell and Matthew J. Evans. Beautiful, beautiful song. Thank you. Beautifully done. So we've been talking about healing from within and the method of doing this is through self-knowledge, self-awareness of who we really are, what we believe currently, and how to transform those beliefs through our willingness to work from within. We talked a bit about the Dr. Phil show that I saw last week about women discussing the problems of aging and the way people treat them as though they were invisible, as though they were not necessary, as though 
they no longer could be beautiful. And I felt that a real healthy talk on the, the importance of self-knowledge and how to do it will help us remember that just because people believe something doesn't make it true. And in this case, it definitely is not true. Now, becoming aware of the beliefs that comprise our personal mindset is essential to our growth as individuals. As our self-knowledge increases, we learn to identify unconscious habit patterns and discover constructive ways to transform them. Our mindsets serve as filters that determine what we see and how we see it. As long as we don't try to step outside the boundaries of our mindset, we manage to stay within our comfort zone. Now, we call it our comfort zone, but it might not always bring us comfort or fulfillment. But it is predictable and safe. However, as soon as we attempt to achieve a goal that is beyond the limits of our current paradigm, we unconsciously set up an internal conflict that can sabotage even our most inspired efforts because there's often a big difference between what we want and what we believe we can have. And so we often hear ourselves asking, what's wrong with me? Why am I struggling so hard? This is a perfect cue for our inner critic to be the first to answer with name calling, berating comments, reminding us of every mistake we've ever made. For those of you who are not familiar with the inner critic, it's an aspect of our consciousness, an archetype that represents the negative, ego-centered, authoritarian level of our consciousness. And within it are all the words, the negative words, or the berating words we have ever heard. Now, contrary to common belief, the inner critic is not our enemy. The inner critic, because it's ego-based, is weak and frightened. And so it will tell us that we can't do things or shouldn't try because that's all it knows to do. Our goal, of course, is to identify the voice of the critic and to be able to understand when these are just old, painful words that we can embrace and release, but not buy into for sure. Now, again, although this critic's information is highly distorted and bears little resemblance to the truth, we tend to believe every word the critic says because our self-esteem is subject to input, particularly negative input. Now, unless we learn how to recognize and disarm our critic, we'll continue to believe that we're inadequate and that people are right to walk by us without noticing or think of us as unnecessary. So to the question, what's wrong with me? The answer is, there's nothing wrong with you. You're a spiritual being created in love, worthy of experiencing the best in life. Searching obsessively for what's wrong reflects a core belief that we are fundamentally flawed and have to be fixed. This is the method that the advertisers use to tell us that we can experience more popularity and more love if we buy and use their products. We first have to believe, however, that we are flawed and need to be fixed before we can believe that their product will fix us and bring us the approval that we so desperately seek. Now, I'm not suggesting that the products won't help us achieve certain goals. They will. What I am saying is that the products won't bring us the sense of self-worth that we're desperately seeking. And this is because the products address our exterior but the solution to our issues of self-worth take place at the interior of our being. 
no matter how good we look, no matter how many compliments we get, it will not change our level of self-esteem because of the very nature of the term. It is done by the self, for the self, and it is, as we say in the trade, an inside job. Now, a more appropriate question than what's wrong with me is what mindset am I bringing to this situation that might be in conflict with my true desires? Now, I'm going to repeat that. This is the real question. Not what's wrong with me, but what mindset am I bringing to this situation that might be in conflict with my true desires? Now, there's a question that we can do something about and that we can work with and helps us understand how to phrase things so that they more accurately describe the situation we're in. There's a huge difference between this two, these two approaches to problem solving. The first question, what's wrong with me, inadvertently begs for a response from our inner critic. The second approach invites inner dialogue with the more rational aspects of our consciousness. It's a mystery that needs to be solved. No blame, no shame. Again, there is nothing wrong with who we are. Everything we need to unfold our divine individuality is already within the spectrum of our consciousness. It is very likely, however, that we're holding on to some negative beliefs that need to be addressed before our goals can be achieved. One of the most challenging of all our beliefs is the question of how much responsibility we need to take for what happens in our lives. Now, for those with more conservative religious beliefs, Humanity is seen as powerless over life circumstances. Things happen because the transcended super being God wills it that way. It is assumed that negative things take place in our lives because we've sinned in some way and are being punished or because we haven't been saved. However, in an effort to liberate ourselves from being totally helpless, it seems that many of us have gone too far in the opposite direction. We've gone from feeling completely powerless to affect our circumstances to believing that we have absolute control over everything that happens in our lives. This illusion of power is not the result of a paradigm shift, but a pendulum swing. We go from, I can't do anything, I'm powerless, to I can do everything, it's all in my hands. This can't be a balanced perspective. Now, too often when we're faced with a challenge, well-meaning friends will ask, how did you draw this into your life? This question can refer to everything from getting a flat tire to contracting a life-threatening disease. The implication is that if we had been holding the right thoughts in mind, we should have been able to prevent these things from happening. Now, at this point, it has been my experience that instead of feeling supported in our time of need, we feel shame for having brought it on ourselves. This phenomenon is often referred to as New Age guilt. So, in other words, we changed the door that we went to on a Sunday morning, but we didn't change the belief system, just the vocabulary. Now, what is our responsibility in life? Is it to analyze everything that happens to us and judge it with either self-praise or self-blame? Is it to believe that if we only did the right thing, we would live a challenge-free, pain-free life? Now, of course, we know that there is a great deal that we can do about changing our external circumstances. 
We can take responsibility for monitoring our stress levels, for learning more effective coping mechanisms to enhance our physical and emotional well-being. We can meditate, pray, follow healthy food and exercise programs, and we can engage in other effective life skills. But does that mean that we will never become ill or fall down or hurt ourselves or be hurt by others? No, we can't control that. Now, we also know that practicing forgiveness and maintaining a loving attitude toward others will significantly enhance the quality of our relationships. But does this mean that everyone will always like and approve of us no matter how much love we show to them? Of course not. Their opinion of us is in their hands, not ours. It's not about our not being good enough. Now, it's also important to be proactive in our business undertakings, to cultivate a prosperity consciousness, to render excellent service, to be fair-minded and compassionate with employees and customers. But does this mean we'll never lose a job or a business? No. There are things beyond our control. The belief that we create the total of our reality is a cognitive distortion called a control fallacy. And it always leaves us feeling not good enough. That can't be the deeper truth. Joan Borisenko, doctor and New Thought author states, Quote, the danger of the you create your own reality doctrine is that while on the surface it seems to offer new freedom, it really is something quite different. In fact, it has replaced the iron chains of original sin with a set of golden chains that seem alluring but are no less a prison. End quote. The truth is, we can't take responsibility for everything that happens in our lives. Even the greatest of spiritual masters have endured times of great challenge, not because they were not good enough or evolved enough, but because challenges are a part of life. We can, however, take responsibility for how we respond to the things that happen to us. If we choose to look at a difficult situation as a learning experience rather than a failure, we would be able to handle it with greater internal poise and equanimity. If we choose to believe the situation can provide us with hidden blessings, we can take responsibility for finding those blessings in the challenges. Now, in relation to nurturing and developing a genuine sense of self-worth regarding the aging process and the huge challenges not, that not only the women on the Dr. Phil show, but women throughout the globe are experiencing, this means learning to recognize that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Now, I want you to take that sentence and work with it because throughout history there have been different ideas of beauty that are not popular right now. The ones that are in vogue right now were not popular then or in a different part of the world. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That should be an empowering statement. We have the ability within us to feel good about who we are and how we are aging without believing that we have outgrown our usefulness because of the way our body is experiencing the aging process. We even have the ability to see great beauty in our aging. There are cultures throughout the world in which that takes place, where the aging process and in and an aging lined face is respected greatly 
and loved. Now, even though it's not a popular concept in our country, doesn't mean it doesn't exist or doesn't have the right to exist. It's important that we either start our own support group or find support groups that will honor these ideas and remind us of our inherent value as we learn to step outside the seductive veil of egotism and look to the greater reality that we are now, always have been, and always will be the beloved creation of spirit, exactly as we are at all times and in all ways. As Eric Butterworth has stated, things may happen to us, and things may happen around us. But the only things we are really responsible for are things that happen within us. You are beautiful. We are beautiful just the way we are. Take a deep breath now and relax as we move into our time of meditation, inner contemplation, and integration of today's message. Let us affirm in the quiet of our own being I am beautiful just the way I am. I am beautiful just the way I am. The unconditional love of spirit is ever present. The unconditional love supports us during every facet of our lives. The unconditional love of God finds us worthy, beautiful, acceptable, at every age. We know and give thanks that we can feel supported as we move through life and honor the changes that take place both within us and on the exterior of our being. It is all spirit, and we are always loved, appreciated, and blessed. Again, breathe deeply and let us affirm in the quiet, I am beautiful just the way I am. I am beautiful just the way I am. I give thanks for the opportunity to hold my head high at any age and recognize my beauty, my poise, my strength, 
my sense of humor, my intelligence, my individuality, expressing in unique and special ways throughout the various aspects of my life. And I love myself just the way I am. I love myself just the way I am. And so it is. It's time now in our service to bless the offerings that we would share and to give thanks for Unity of San Luis Obispo and our thriving online ministry. We give thanks for the many of you who are watching each week and we ask that you would share a bit of your bounty with Unity of San Luis Obispo as a tithe and an offering to the work that we do and also to the work that you do in demonstrating the divine law of attraction, the law of reciprocity, the law of giving and receiving. As you give, so shall you receive. And as you do so, you benefit not only your own consciousness, but you understand that a portion of all of our ties that we receive go to benefit organizations that support civil rights and planetary transformation. So please keep us in your thoughts and prayers and keep us on your tithing and giving list. We appreciate it so much. Let's speak the words of our prosperity statement together. I give in love because I love to give. God is my source. Here's a song uh, from uh, 1993, written by none other than Sting, as he goes by. It's called Fields of Gold. One.
fields of gold from Sting, and uh, the year was 1993. I'll have to sing it one of these days. Oh, yeah. This is a great song. So cool to play. Okay. Thank you so much, Brett Mitchell and Matthew J. Evans. What a beautiful, beautiful rendition of that inspiring song. One of my very favorites. Thank you. Let's sing our peace song, shall we? Let's speak the words of our prayer for protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Friends, please remember to press the like button and to share your comments with us. We really appreciate hearing from you. Also, please remember to tune in to the Get Off Your Affirmation podcast. And beginning the first Sunday in February, next Sunday, we will start honoring Black heroes during Black History Month. So please remember to stay tuned. And I want you to know that you're beautiful. I want you to remember that. Have a wonderful week. You deserve it. Every single person living peace in what we do Only then will our dream come true Only then will our dream come true Only then will our dream